hi everybody i'm robin and these are my reflections and today i am here to go over the final version of the brown witch lenny a cheeky bipoc halloween witch lenormand deck and it's accompanying full um physical guide i have a full walkthrough of the prototype of this deck which i will link right here for you in case you want to see um my thoughts about the deck i did give a lot of thoughts i'm not going to talk deeply about that right now we're just going to kind of go through the basics of what has changed here and then just take a look at the guidebook because that's the biggest change all right so let's get into it so if you're looking at this is my prototype which i've been using and this is the new one that just came in i i haven't uh opened this one yet but she did adjust the box a little bit this one was upside down so she fixed that and i know that there's quite a few other um there's quite a few other changes in the in here. Like she's changed the car style. We're gonna take a look. So it says the brown witch Lenny dresses every witch in classic attire of skirt, hat, striped stockings, and cowboy boots. We've got three alternate cards. So there's an alternate for the coffin, which is the seance, the dog, which is the familiar, the cross, which is the trials, and I'll show you those. And then five keyword cards, one double-faced card. And I think we get one other extra card in here too, but we'll take a look. I think she said there was one other extra card. So the guidebook. It's color, full color. This is a soft, uh, glossy cover. And the pages are just regular pages that you could write on. They're not glossy. And then in the inside, you have an introduction, which tells you kind of how the book is laid out. You get a full table of contents, which is nice. And then co a full color image, which is actually larger than the actual Lenormand card. <laughs> this is a large image and very readable font which i am very excited so about. you get a huge image this is bigger than the actual card the number the title and then the playing card inset then you get what's going on in the card in a quick divination you get it's positive or negative or neutral um active or passive and then some explanation about the card and some samples and each card has a different style of sample so for instance this one has a five card pull and an example some of them have like a full grand tableau sample um some of them have like a three card pull sample so there's lots of different types of samples in here and how you can interpret cards in different ways and i thought that was cool that she put a sample for every card and then used the opportunity to show us different ways to interpret different types of spreads and different ways that you might use Lenormand cards. And with. when you have two options for a card, both options are presented in the guidebook. So you don't have to worry about which one you choose. So this was my favorite part of this guidebook. It talks about laying out the cards and interesting ways that she uses the grand tableau to answer certain questions as if she would lay out the whole tableau, but only read certain cards or maybe only lay out the cards within certain houses to answer certain questions. So let me just give you an example. So you get this colored um, box uh, graph here, right? And then for instance, I'm not gonna show you um, the whole thing cause you know, you gotta get the book, but <laughs> I wanna show you just kind of an example, the green box here, right? This green box. She says that if she's reading on a work life, she may only lay out on a grand tableau this this these boxes so the scythe house the broom the birds the dog the tower the garden the book the letter and desire she'll lay cards in those boxes or maybe lay out the whole tableau and read the cards from those boxes for a work life reading because it represents the co-workers meetings the worker headquarters paperwork that kind of stuff right but if she's reading about relationships maybe she'll read from these boxes letter desire seeker lilies and so forth and so on. I think it's really cool how she explains that. I'm not going to give it all away, but I think that was, I thought that was really cool. So that is the book. Um, let's take a look at the cards. I'm just gonna lay them out here in a tableau. This is my first time opening these and they open nicely. I love these drive-through card boxes because they have these sort of foldovers that make them really sturdy for a tuck box. So yeah, so that's the, the box. The cards give you this section here at, at a glance, basically. So this section of the guidebook, this quick, this quick reference part, you get it at a glance on these cards. So if you didn't want to have the guidebook or you don't want to get the guidebook or you just don't want to carry it with you or have it out, you have that here. They're front and back. QR code for a PDF version of the guidebook. 
and you get an extra card. This one is carte blanche. Okay, so they came in a different kind. They came um, sort of backwards from the way that I like to look at them. So I, I moved them around. <laughs> Um, I did want to let you know that they are a textured cardstock. This is a linen. This is the drive through cards version of linen cardstock. I don't know if you can see the cross hatching there. Um, you get a carte blanche card, which is meant to be for a spell casting. And the spell is in the guidebook. And this is meant to be the spell there as well. And then you get the card. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to lay them out in threes so that you can see them together. So we start with Rider clover and ship and you can see our brown witches start to pop up and there are lots of brown witches in this deck because what she's done is here here's the first one she's taken the um the court cards or the face cards from the playing card insets and popped the character out into the image she says she did this because she wanted people she wanted to be able to have a deck where it was very clear um a, a very clear reminder of the court cards because she or the face cards because she uses them in her reading to help with personalities people things like that and she really just highlighted um parts of the the lenormand cards that were already there that some people don't really pay close attention to but she does so she put them in the card which i think is amazing because i kind of love to use um try to use the playing cards i'm still new at lenormand but i try to use the playing card insets to help layer meaning so it's very cool that she's popped them out and put them onto the card, which kind of helps remind me to use them, you know? So um, you've got house, tree, and clouds. There's snake. You see our queen of clubs, the coffin, and seance. So coffin and seance are two, are two options for the same card. So you, have, you can have coffin for number eight or seance. You've got bouquet. You see our queen of spades. The scythe, which this is the jack of hearts, no, the jack of diamonds, and broom, which is the jack of clubs, there in our broom card. You got bird, child, and fox. I'm not going to keep shouting them out, but I love the, the dice here for the child card. I think the images are adorable. Um, I don't know. I just find myself reaching for this one a lot, maybe because there's a lot of brown witches on here. <laughs> there's a lot of brown people and it makes me happy to look at. I think the images are cute. So for dog, um, you have an extra, an alternative, which is familiar. So these two would be alternatives. You could choose one or the other. There's tower. Look at the little tower. It's like this, like, I don't know. Maybe it reminds me of the car. Do you remember the Beetlejuice cartoon? This makes me think of the Beetlejuice cartoon and a lot of the, um, maybe the stripey stockings and all that also does. And I love Beetlejuice. It just makes me happy to look at. So it's cute. <laughs> Mice, heart, and ring. I love the borders because it makes the, because the cards do tend to be a little busier. And because, um, because they're busy, the border really keeps it from, getting too busy I can't it, it calms it down a little bit so for I'm just gonna put this here for your people cards you have desire and seeker so the seeker would be your querent and the desire would be the other person basically um, lilies sun and moon key fish and anchor and your last two alternatives are trials and cross which I think are cute. I think I chose the trial. I have the trials one in my other one because why not? It's a witch uh, deck. <laughs> so those are your cards. There's 36 traditional cards. It's a traditional amount. So okay. let's shuffle. Um, they shuffle. I'm sure going to shuffle great. The other one shuffled. Yeah. And these are linen. These, um, they shuffle about the same as the other deck, to be honest. Nice and bouncy. Sturdy. So I think that they're not, they're not a mushy linen. This is a, um, this is a nice linen cardstock, like a playing card, proper playing card linen cardstock. <laughs> and I like it. Yes. That means they're going to last for a long time and they're not too textured. So that means that the, the, uh, images won't rub off on them because 
sometimes with linen, um, I especially make playing cards and printer studio linen, I've noticed that uh, after a while, the images start to rub off because of the texture um, of them going like this, like, and, and the images will rub off on them. So I think this one might do better. I don't know. I haven't put it through its trials yet, but because it's a linen that's not as textured, I can't feel it to my touch as much. I think it might last a little longer. So let's take a look at Fox in the guidebook. So here's the write-up for Fox. If you'd like to read it for yourself, I'm going to read it out loud. It says, Fox with human shadow, things aren't as they appear. In two worlds, work life taking over, quick wit, and trickster. Those are your keywords. It's a negative and active card. It says, when the fox shows up, consider the context. If it's about work, the fox is a hard worker. They walk in two worlds, and this can be two jobs, the fox and the witch shadow. It can also speak to jobs that require quick thinking and wit, like a writer who might have a second job to pay the bills. The fox can also tell you things are not as they seem. This could be outright deception or a situation with an unexpected outcome or details you are unaware of. Being that things aren't as they seem, when the fox shows up, don't assume, look hard. Expand the reading for context if needed. Again, why I like a nine card box or grand tableau. Okay. So I pulled out the cards for the sample reading. So let's take a look. The question is, all week, my partner has been calling me at work, talking cheerful, wants to make plans for after work. It seems suspicious. Is there another woman? And these are the cards she pulled, book, box, coffin, tower. The answer that she gave was, you are correct. They are acting suspicious, but it's not what you think, box and reading. It's not what you think. Your partner has lost their job, coffin tower and they are skittish about telling you this is what they are hiding then she got another question so let's lay that one out did i ever show you the backs um here you go <laughs> it's this triple moon it's very beautiful and i like the the light it feels like light in the darkness but um so here's the next example that was under the fox card um, the question for this one was our apartment building got a new supervisor. He seems very friendly and chatty. What do you see? And she got house clouds, tower, dog, fox, birds. And the answer she gives here is the supervisor is the fox. He's very social. That's the birds. They appear to have everyone's back. That's the dog. Best friend to all who make a home there. The fox is also the intermediary to the clouds. This top row is in charge. The fox delivers all the gossip they have gathered in plain view. Okay, so there you go. That's her answer to the question. Yes, he is uh, as friendly as the Clarent believes him to be, but he's also a gossip. <laughs> so there you go. Those are the, those were the, that's the guidebook. Okay, so that's it. That's the Brown Witch Lenny and its guidebook. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I will post in the description box below where you can pick this deck up as well as, like I said, um, if you check down there in the cards from the beginning of the video, I did put um, a link to the previous video that I did of the prototype of this if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about um, the cards in depth. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, you can subscribe. I release videos every few days regarding tarot and oracle. And until I see you guys next time, stay safe and be blessed. Bye-bye.